The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter, Patty's Page. Today my show is all about Linda Lael Miller, who is a number one best-selling author of many books, over 150 at least, series or whatever books. So uh, she's going to come on my show in a moment, and we're doing a Skype interview with her today. So uh, be with you in a moment, and we'll be asking her questions about herself and her books. Welcome to my show, Patty's Page, Linda Lael Miller. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Patty. And you have been uh, number one news, New York Times and USA best-selling author. Um, how many novels and such have you written over the years? I stopped counting at a hundred. I think it's somewhere around a hundred and fifty. Oh my so goodness! I'm busy. And what themes? What what uh, gigs? I mean, what they themes? They have basically all been some form of romance. I did do four vampire romances and uh, back in the nineties, and I also have done some romantic suspense. But basically, they're all romance. So. Where were you born and raised, my friend? I was born in Spokane, Washington, which is where I live now, and raised about 120 miles north of here at Northport, Washington, which is a little tiny town just south of the Canadian border. Ah, we have been down here in the uh, United States for about 21 years. Okay, well, yes. you probably visit Toronto fairly often. I try to, I try to. When you were in grade school or high school or whatever you call it down here. <laughs> uh, who gave you the incentive to write? Books? There were several people, but the first instance was in fifth grade. I had a teacher named Bob Hyatt, and I was one of those kind of shy kids, and I had and still have ADD, but nobody knew what it was then, so they just thought I was weird. Mm -hmm. But they assigned us a paper to write, and he gave me a really good grade on it and said, uh, you know, you could be a writer if you wanted to. And I uh, I thought, well, that's good, you know. Here's something I can be good at. So I just never really looked back from there. That's I just decided then and there. And then I had a, a teacher in high school, Crystal Harworth. And oh, yeah. She, I'm sorry? I said, oh, yeah. And she, uh, uh, she just was kind of a taskmaster, but I learned so much from her. So I credit both those people. But probably the main and most important influence was my mother because she's a great reader and, and is very good with words herself. So I think I, I sort of inherited an affinity for words from my mother. Do you have brothers and sisters or family? I do. I'm the eldest of four. And I have one brother and two sisters. I have two sisters. One a twin with me. Oh, you're a twin. That's so cool. That's always fascinated me. Hey, one year younger, my other sister, and I have a half brother. I don't know which half is. Where are you? <laughs> that must have been an interesting combination to have twin sisters and then one a year younger. I think that would be an interesting dynamic. Yeah, that, my my poor mom, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That especially when you hit high school or even junior high. When you get to be a teen, something else. Poor mom and dad. We we're teens. Oh boy. <laughs> my daughter, and she was really a pretty easy kid to raise, but she got real mouthy when she um, hit puberty, and oh. I went to complain to my mother, and I got no sympathy. She just seemed to think that what goes around comes around. You betcha. You betcha. 
When, what year did you become a published author? I sold my first book in 1983. That was Fletcher's Woman. Fletcher's and, Woman? I'm sorry? Fletcher's Woman, what was that about? It's Fletcher's Woman, and uh, Pocket bought it as a part of their tapestry line at the time. Oh. They were trying to develop new uh, historical romance writers. So several of us got started then, including Julie Garwood and um, Joan Johnston and several other people. What's the difference between a novel and a book? Is it well, same? I think a book is a more general term. It could be anything, nonfiction, you know, how to raise armadillos, anything like that. But a novel is fiction. Huh. And you ever write nonfiction? I haven't at this point, no. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've... I'd love to read memoirs, but I, I don't think I'm done yet, so i got to wait a while before I do that. <laughs> Who was your publisher when you started to uh, sell books? The first one was Pocket Books, and I was with them for 20 years. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I moved to Harlequin, and right for HQN, and I've been there a really long time. Sorry about that phone. It's all right. So what were um, the style of novels you have written over the years, like it's all romance or? Everything uh, has been primarily romance, yeah, some aspect of it. I did write the vampire I books, but they, they were romances. And when did you start to write series of each? That's, I did some series at uh, Pocket, or at, yes, when I was still at Pocket, um, at that time, Readers seem to really, really love, I think they still do, but they like a connected story where they know the characters and, you know, they know the place and they seem to enjoy that. So, and I'm still doing that with my romances, but I'm also doing uh, a big Civil War series. Oh, yeah. So, that's a little different. Uh, how many series have you written over the years? Oh my goodness, I don't know, but it must be a dozen. I think about least. 15 or 16 or something like that. Yes, yes, I, I because kinda... I've written so many of those that were um, were connected. Can you name some of them? Well, some... all of the parable books, I think as it uh, turned out, there were like six of those in the end. Uh, there were a lot of McKetrick books. That started out with the three, the first three historicals um, were... Uh, historical McKetrick books, and then the, the characters were so popular that people wanted uh, uh, wanted more of those. So we had the Big Sky books, and the, uh, I'm looking at Jenny's notes here. She's <laughs> I and hear you. The Stone, there were some Stone Creek books. Yeah. Um, the the um, Look series from uh, Pocket, which was Romantic Suspense, and then the Mojo Sheepshanks books, which are being re-released under um, new titles, so that's a little confusing. What's your favorite uh, style now? Uh, are you into adventure, western, or...? What, I, what I'm writing now yeah. um, is a big, epic, um, historical set uh, near Gettysburg, just before the battle, before, during, and after the battle in 1863. That's what I'm working on now. But I will still be doing my uh, Western, contemporary Western trilogies for the foreseeable future. Yes, you're very good. I read some of your, uh, <clears throat> what well, we could read, of uh, the novels that you have written on your, on your, uh, oops. <laughs> my cat has dug his, his thing. That accounts for the really weird face I just made. This, I have a 21-year-old <laughs> cat. Uh, I decided to jump in and be in the Oh, hello there. Very often. Snook comes to say, wow, what was that? Yeah, he dug his, his claws into my leg. This is his unfortunate habit that he has. <laughs> Have you won any awards for your well, novels? Yes, I've won a lot of awards. Uh, I have the Lifetime Achievement Award from uh, uh, Romance Writers of America and numerous, uh, numerous other awards that. I can't, even off the top of my head, I can't think. There was one, the Centennial Award from, uh, mm. uh, also from RWA when I sold 100 books. And that was the only way I knew that I had passed the 100 mark because wow. I had stopped counting a long, long time ago. So, um, and all the books you have sold over the years, 
Uh, what which one is your favorite, dear? Well, to me, uh, that's a two pointed question. The book that I'm writing uh, at the time is always my favorite because that's the one where I'm really engaged where my, with my emotions and my interests. But I have a very special place in my heart for a book called The Man from Stone Creek ah. that I wrote for Harlequin a few years ago. How long have you been with Harlequin now? Uh, my goodness, it must be 10, 12 years, something like that, quite a while. And you have, do you have any e-books? Or just yeah, just about everything is out as an ebook too. The publishers handle that. Good, good. Um, Hallmark Movie Channel. What movie series will they be making for TV? I understand that's happening. It, it's in the works. It's still uh, very nebulous. I have no dates or anything, but they are using the Big Sky books. Uh, oh. They were set in a town called Parable, Montana, which I made up. And so it'll be a contemporary Western series. Oh. But I have no dates yet because they're, they're still doing scripts and everything. So, um, your latest novel, Once a Rancher, when was this released? What is it about? Once a Rancher, when was it released and what's it all oh, about? Oh, I'm sorry, it was... Uh, uh, in April, so it would have come out at the very tag end of March. It was in April 2016. And you have how many series? In, how many in that series? Um, in this series, so far, uh, there, there are three. Okay. And um, what's the name of a series that Once a Rancher is in? I think they're calling it the Carsons of Mustang Creek. Do you go traveling all over the country to find out what it's like to live that way, or? How? Well, you know, I grew up, and technically, I grew up around cowboys, uh, cattle ranchers, western people. My dad was a town marshal, oh, yeah. so a lot of that. And Montana's not very far from here, and it's my mother's home state, so a lot of that um, just comes from from growing up in it. However, with the Civil War books, I, I've done a lot of uh, several trips back to Gettysburg for, for research. I hear a morning dove outside. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. We have them too. I just can't hear them right now. Yeah, I can hear them outside the window. My here. dogs make all the noise. We have Orioles, you know, the yellow and black birds. Oh, my goodness. And yeah, they're we, after I don't our, think we have those here. We I have them. I'd like to see those, and I'd like to see a. A cardinal sometime. I've we have plenty of those here, girl. And blue oh, jays. Ah. Uh, anyways, uh, there'll be more of the same series of Carson and... Yes, there are two more books um, in the series. Um, the next out? one is Always a Cowboy. Always a Cowboy. And the one after that is Forever a Hero. Oh. Do they have brothers? Talking about brothers? They are... Uh, um, Yes, they're brothers. So, um, where do you get these ideas to, uh, come on, girl. I don't, I, I don't really know. I've done the brother thing for a long, long time, and sometimes I bury it, and they'll be cousins or just friends, but I find that dynamic works real well, and I think it goes back to Bonanza. Okay. I was such a huge Bonanza fan, and then later the Big Valley, and so I kind of like that dynamic. Uh, be, between brothers, and it might even be the root of my interest in the Civil War because you know it was brother against brother. And in some of these stories, they're romance, of course. And yes, everyone? they are romance. Oh, yes, yeah. the, so they... the, the Civil War books have uh, romantic relationships in them, but they're not specifically uh, romances, they're, they're women's fiction or commercial fiction. So, when you were taught how to write long ago, <laughs> and far away, yes, <laughs> many um, moons ago, I taught myself how to write. How did, uh, how I was already published when when R. W. A. came on the scene, and and uh, they're a great resource for new people now because they have trained writers, uh, accomplished writers, and they hold workshops, and they have local chapters and all of that stuff, but. My age group, we kind of just had to find our own way. 
Same here when I was learning how to write poetry and lyrics. Mm -hmm. I I went to Berkeley uh, online. I don't I don't know that that can be you know you can learn the, the fundamentals and the guidelines, but I I bet you'd agree that it's uh, it's really so subjective with each different person. It's it's inside what you. Yes. Yes. Is I it like therapy? Uh, I don't think it can. Yeah. I don't think it can be taught. Um, you know, no. you, here's you how it, you write a poem. You gotta yeah. have it, man. You gotta have it. Yeah, you're. I think you're to a degree. You're born with it, but if you don't work on the craft, then your talent is useless. Waste, wasteful, wasteful. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think um, so, you're helping several causes, benefits for. I, I I'm very. Uh, I love animals like you. I also love people. Uh, I'm, I get um, involved with animal, um, my local chapter, when, or my local shelter. What I encourage people to do is to support their local shelters, because if everybody did that, then the problem would be um, significantly reduced. My other cause, and this is just, I'm just now developing this, is uh, veterans, because um, I think that the way we treat them is not that much different from the way they treated Union soldiers when they came back from the war. They had, you know, basically held the country together, yeah. but they weren't welcomed back. They were regarded as a burden, and, you know, a lot of them ended up in insane asylums or begging on street corners. So, uh, I Yeah, we get that here. Y yes, and I, we still have, you know, we still have these people coming home, and, and uh, nobody's helping them. You know, so I, I think that we need to have, uh, just as we have basic training at the beginning, I think we need to have a diffusing process at the end where they, where they can be have counseling and be reacclimated. Because I, I, it can't be a good idea to go from a, a city in, in, you know, in Afghanistan to a Walmart in Hoboken. You know, it's too much of a shift if you don't prepare people. And if they don't get proper mental help. Exactly. They We're break out. Very tragic results of that uh, are, and it's very far reaching. So that's my people cause is the um, treatment of these people who, whatever someone's um, political opinion, maybe these people have preserved our uh, freedom. They're putting everything on the line and to do their, you know, to do what they believe is right. Now that's up for discussion and I wouldn't think of going there, but I do support them and I honor them and I'm very, very grateful to them. My father was um, a Marine in the Second World War and he was uh, uh, on Iwo Jima and the veterans of the second, First and Second World War uh, were treated uh, better. Than, but since Vietnam, we've had a bad yes, habit yeah, again yeah. of just um, kind of throwing them back in and expecting them to know what to do when they've been um, in such an incredibly stressful, uh, dangerous situation for so long. I met someone in 1967 when I was in Montreal for an expo or something like that there. And he is from the United States and he was riding a bike, he was young. He was a soldier over in Vietnam and he would not be able to settle down anywhere because he had seen so much carnage that it, it affected his mind spiritually that he couldn't relax and just stay in one place. Absolutely. And, and they, they turned and this to drugs. Is very real. They need way, way more help than we're giving them. And of course, we've all seen the Vietnam veterans out alongside the freeway, you know, with the signs. And this just, chairs. It just shouldn't happen. It should not happen. And they're um, breaking up here. Uh, the other causes that you're doing, like for horses. I uh, yes, I, that that's a kind of a private thing, but I give I just give to a, an organization that takes care of rescued horses. But I'm just a contributor for that. I'm not. Uh, it's Habitat for Horses, and I believe that Willie Nelson may be the spokesperson oh. for that. But uh, um, I am a, but I'm just a contributor with that. But it's a, 
it is a cause that I care greatly about. Um, animals also, you know, world, uh, the wildlife all over the world and the, and the sea life and, you know, all of Everything. this. Everything. Life is precious. If, if, if you muck about with one life, it destroys everything else, like a domino effect. I think we're all really, I think the mystics are right that we're all really one. Uh, and I believe that, you know, it's quantum physics. What the uh, what science is saying now is what the mystics have been saying for millennia, which is that everything basically is the same. You know, we're all, and we're all at the particle level or even probably far below that. Uh, but we're all, you know, I'm the same as these trees. I'm looking out over the area behind my house right now, and there are all these pine trees. And I believe that we're all one, and that the li the earth too is a living being, and we better wake up and have some respect. Well, I'm trying to do an interview with some from Humane Society of United States of mm -hmm. America. I know those people in that, and um, I commend them. Uh, I Aaron. Do you know Aaron? Uh, Wayne Cohen? is the person. Uh, Wayne. Uh, oh, I can't say his last name. Oh, okay. It's, it starts with a P, but he's a great guy. Uh, that's a that's a good thing, and I certainly would encourage people to to contribute at that level. But I uh, I think that first, it's just like cleaning up your own doorstep. I think we need to to support our uh, local shelters that's first. Right. That's the right. Charity begins at home, so to speak, and and you know a large part of the their funding has been cut, just like everything has been cut, you know. So they need help, and this is all of our uh, all of our job, in my opinion, because these animals are are uh, living creatures with feelings, and and they can love and be loved, and and they deserve to be uh, treated well. And you know, of course, that we need to have more spaying and neutering, so we don't have the uh, babies such all a over the place. Problem. Yeah. You know, um. To me, we are supposed to be put on Earth to be caretakers of Earth and all that's in it. But we're destroying left, right, and center. And if it's something pretty out there, any type of pretty life, we destroy it because we have this... I, I agree. Uh, I, I don't I, understand. I, I, but, I, but I do say on a positive note, there are a lot of people... Uh, there's a rise in consciousness yes. concerning this. There's a great rise in awareness... Just since the time I was was young, things have really changed in yes. terms of of how life is, you know, how all life is treated and, and what's permitted and what isn't. You are called the first lady of the West. <laughs> who named? Who got you? That, who gave you that one? Well, that's kind of a that's kind of a spin publicity thing, you know. Years ago, uh, somebody in the publicity department at Pocket Books just decided to call me that, and it stuck. <laughs> well, there are a lot of other good Western writers, so I don't know if I'm the first lady of the West or not. But uh, I didn't do that. The pe the publishers uh, the just publishers. Uh, <laughs> decided that was what they'd call me. So well, I said, okay, I'll go with it. We're proud of you, girl. You're doing a lot of good well, stuff for everybody. Everybody out well, there. Well, I think if you're so blessed and you get to do what you love for a living and, and get something you would do anyway, um, you need to give back. You know, if you're fortunate, you need to give back. For my audience, what piece of sound advice can you give inspiring writers and authors? I would tell them that the first and foremost thing is to read. Um, all writer, all the successful writers that I know are voracious readers. Uh, have, have been forever because it's um, there's somebody else's words, but when you pour all these words into your your mind, and there's some kind of uh, symbiotic thing that goes on down there, and and that's how stories are created. And I notice when I'm writing, if I start to run a little dry, uh, if I just read a lot. You know, then the ideas start to perk again. So I, that that is the first thing I always say is to to read. The other thing is to actually write. You'd be surprised at how many people ask me about an agent or how much money they can expect to make yeah. or whatever, yeah. uh, and they haven't written the word. So it it doesn't work that way. It's I think your it's, joy. It's inner self coming out like a therapy or, or sharing and, and whatever. You have the, it's more about removing the barriers to that yeah. and, 
and telling your truth, whatever that is. And there's an old saying that if you have to want to do writing or anything else, really, uh, you have to be willing to do it badly and, until you can do it well. And I think people kind of over edit or maybe they don't even start because they're so intimidated and, and they'll look maybe at one of their favorite author's books and, and think, I could never do that. Well, I can tell you from experience that, that those words don't come out of your head like that. You, you write them down and you work them and rework them. But if you don't have anything down on the screen or on paper, you don't have anything to rework. So it's first read and second is just write, just write. It took me about 11 years to rewrite and rewrite one poem, and everybody loves it now. Before that, I, I totally get that, and I think it was Phyllis Whitney. She was a, a romantic suspense writer that I just loved, and she always said, good things aren't written, they're rewritten, and I think that is absolutely true. Because I can write something and really like the way it is, but the next day when I go back, I can definitely oh, find did I write that? It. I think I better tone this up again, okay. <laughs> I enjoyed it, Patty, thank well, you. Well, I enjoyed you too, thank you so much. And and if I can send you the wolves, <laughs> send you to the wolves. I would love to read that. And yes. I have a spoken word to it. Okay, can you just uh, email that to me? Yes, ma'am. All righty, love to see it. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you, dear, you. and you are a joy to interview. Well, thank you. You're a joy to be interviewed by, so I guess we're all happy. <laughs> oh, but <laughs> thank this you. This is my first Skype interview ever, so uh, I was a little nervous, but it's it was painless, so you, thank you, you for that. You did a good job. You did a very good job, and, and I do appreciate what you have done for me. Well, and thank you. for the other people out there. You entertain as well as share what you feel and think. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Adios, mi amiga. Adios, ma'am. Bye-bye, dear. Bye. God speed, my love, until we meet again. You're always in my heart and every dream. Don't let this time apart give in to all our fears. God will keep close from up above so until we meet again God speed my love God is with us all